The economy is not sending any signals that we need to be in a hurry to lower rates. Could a soft landing in a resilient U.S. economy mean interest rates stay higher for longer? Let's break it down. At the moment, millions of Americans are waiting on relief from mortgage rates. But unfortunately, the Federal Reserve just hinted at a slower pace of cutting rates. So what does that mean for your wallet when it comes to buying a house? In this video, we'll discuss why the economy is still powering through, what inflation data is actually telling us, along with the surprising role that jobs and consumer spending are playing. Plus, we'll explain why Trump might be the biggest villain in the inflation story and what that could mean for mortgage rates as we head into 2024. At the moment, what we have is a lot of uncertainty when it comes to where the economy is headed. And it really boils down to a couple of different factors from inflation to jobs, along with what's happening in the economy and how the Fed and Trump plan to react to it. At the time we're filming this video, mortgage rates are sitting over 7% and at the highest level that we've seen in nearly five months. And unfortunately, because of what we're going to discuss in this video, I don't really see a case for mortgage rates coming down nearly as quickly as they went up. The biggest driver of higher mortgage rates over the last couple of years has been inflation. But the good news is inflation is coming down with the annual inflation rate hitting 2.6% in October. Now, if you know anything about the Fed and inflation, their goal is to get inflation down to a 2% annualized target. And while inflation sits at 2.6%, it's not high by any means, but it does remain elevated as with 0.2% month over month prints for the last four months, that has us sitting at 2.4%, which is slightly above the Fed target of 2%. And with that, Powell even came out and said that he expects inflation to continue to come down towards their goal, but also mentioning that it might be on a bumpy path. But the important thing to know when it comes to inflation is if we take shelter out of that equation, we've actually been below the Fed target for over 18 months, which means we don't actually have an inflation problem, but rather we have a housing problem, which for many of you out there watching this video know because it's been happening for the last three years. Now, the next piece of data and probably the most important piece when it comes to what the Fed's paying attention to is the job market. And this past week, we got U.S. initial jobless claims dropping to the lowest level that we've seen since May, with the four-week moving average also reaching the lowest level since May. And because of this, it looks like the Fed has actually accomplished their goal of a soft landing. And because of that, the Fed knows that they don't have to be nearly as aggressive as they were just a couple of months ago and that they have more time on their side to pay attention to what the market's doing without having to make these quick reactions. In fact, Fed Chair Powell said that the economy is not sending signals that the U.S. central bank needs to be in a hurry to lower mortgage rates. Now, pay attention to what I said there. It doesn't say that they're not going to lower rates. It just says that they're not in a hurry to do it. And while the Fed doesn't directly control mortgage rates, their policy does impact both the bond and and the stock market, which in turn impacts mortgage rates. At the moment, you have the stock market hitting all-time highs, Bitcoin hitting all-time highs, and this really strong wealth effect feeling in the market. And the reason that's important is because stocks and bonds actually compete for one another. So as the stock market continues to do well, that means less money going into bonds, which in turn pushes yields higher. And if you've been paying attention to the 10-year note for any period of time, we know that the higher the 10-year goes, the higher we actually see mortgage rates. And if all of that wasn't enough, you have retail sales climbing again ahead of the holiday season, which is showing that the U.S. economy still has a lot of momentum. And because of that, the U.S. economy is growing faster than expected. And it's largely because of strong consumer spending, which is the backbone of the economy. And because we have such a resilient economy, that might actually cause the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates more slowly, which also means that mortgage rates are likely to stay higher for longer. So at the moment, we have a Fed that's not in a hurry, along with a Fed that's waiting for the housing services inflation to fully normalized, which we're a long way from there. On top of a market that we have economic growth with job numbers reporting better than expected, inflation heading down towards the Fed's 2% target, and a stock market that's given the consumer more and more confidence that everything is just A-OK -okay with the economy. And if all of that wasn't enough, you now have Republicans winning Congress. And because of this, the market is viewing Trump and all of his policies as inflationary. And the main reason for that is because they believe that Trump is going to come in and cut taxes, which means reduced revenue. And because of that, he's likely to have increased spending from the different proposals that he discussed during his campaign. And the one thing that we know about President Trump is he loves a strong economy. He wants businesses to grow. And the caveat is if we see the economy and the market stay strong and businesses grow, more and more people get jobs, well, then that would mean that there's no need for interest rates to actually come down. There's something really, really important to understand about mortgage rates. If the economy is strong and doing well, there's no need for the government to stimulate the economy which again means the stock
stock market is probably doing well, less money going into bonds, which in turn means higher rates until we get some certainty in the market. And I think that's the most important thing that I've said here the entire episode is that there's just a lack of certainty of what's happening out there in the economy and what's expected to happen with this change in presidency. At the end of the day, if you want to see lower interest rates, you want to see a slower economy. But at the same time, a slower economy likely means people are getting laid off and you're likely feeling the opposite of that wealth effect. So instead of wanting to see a really strong economy or a really weak economy, but the ideal economy would be one growing at somewhere around the Fed's target of 2%. Because with an economy like that, you could see businesses doing well and mortgage rates coming down at the same time. But this is where I'd like to ask your opinion. What do you think all of this means for mortgage rates? Do you think we're likely to see higher mortgage rates in the future? And if so, for how long? Or do you believe that the economy is suffering more than the numbers are reporting and that we're likely to see lower rates here in the near future? Do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. Now, when it comes to mortgage rates, now isn't the time to play guessing games on what you think is going to happen in the economy. If you're currently under contract and you're waiting on mortgage rates to come down and you're not going to lock because you know you think mortgage rates are going to come down in the future or next week or whatever, this is not the time for that. The market is way too too volatile at the moment. So make sure you're locking your rate up front. Yes, you need to be comfortable with the rate. You need to be comfortable with the payment associated with it. You shouldn't be buying a house unless you're completely comfortable with where things are now. Don't be buying with the expectation that rates are going to come down in six months and that you're going to refinance and that all of a sudden it's going to become more affordable. You have to do what the market is doing. So don't try to pick the top or the bottom in mortgage rates, but rather focus on what you can control. So with that, my prediction for the foreseeable future is that interest rates probably stay higher for longer, that they're going to be bouncing somewhere between the six and a half and seven and a half percent range until you see a meaningful change in the things that we discussed today. So with that, if you found any value today, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up and let me know your thoughts on mortgage rates in the comments below.